good. I think uh, most of the people are able to get this. This is a very simple step. Uh, you'll be seeing two main things, uh, test plan and workbench. This is only the starting point of JMeter. You download a JMeter, configure the JMeter, configure the Java path, then start the batch file. This is a very simple set of steps. And of course, again, this webinar is going to be uploaded in a recorded mode because there is a good amount of help available on JMeter from Apache site. This is the very first step. Uh, then what we are going to show to you now is uh, we will show you a sample application what we are going to take as part of a case study today. We are going to take a simple application. It's a browser based application. The browser, you open the browser, we have installed this application. This application is not available over the net. This is specific. You, you have a JPET store. It shows some of the categories like uh, fish, dogs, etc. And imagine a user clicks on dogs, okay? The user clicks on dogs. It shows products page. If you go to eBay or overstock.com or even uh, fashionandyou.com, mintra.com, you first get categories, right? Mobile phones, then uh, accessories, watches, jewelry. You first go to category, then it lists products, then you choose one product out of it. So you can choose a product from this. Can you choose one product, Kaushik? Yeah. Okay. So the user chooses a product. Now, within the product, you get multiple items. And you choose one item. You are choosing one item. You are adding to the cart, right? This is a simple, this is fine, up to this is fine. So imagine one user goes to uh, an online site. This is only a sample application, we install it locally. So if you have a sample application, you can access it locally. A user goes to the home page, goes to the category page, goes to the products page, goes to the items page, and then adding to the cart. This is a scenario. Imagine if hundreds of users are doing this, what will happen? So that is where we have this JMeter coming into picture. The very first step in JMeter is you need to configure a proxy. A proxy is something, is a layer in between your browser and JMeter to know what exactly you are doing. So now we will show how to configure a proxy. Go ahead. Okay. So. The proxy is the one where which captures all the requests from the website and then it will create a script. Okay, so in order to do that, the first thing is you need to go to the workbench. Go to the workbench, right click, add, add a non-test element, add a non-test element and click on HTTP proxy server. So this is how it is done. Okay. So what I'm doing is right clicking on workbench, right click on workbench, add non test element HTTP proxy server. And I, I would say this is one of One's the typical usability proxy. issues you will face because uh, the menus could have been better. Ideally if someone has given those menus at the top, it will be easy for the people to straight away go and then click. But okay, uh, this, some of the open source tools do have this kind of a usability issue. So someone needs to know non-test elements. Uh, they can simply say add proxy. That would have been simple. But in between there is a technical jargon. But that is fine because this is done by techies. So it is techie friendly. Go ahead. Okay. So now once you have added the proxy server, you need to start the proxy server. The start button for proxy server is available at the bottom of the page. You can see at the bottom of the screen there is a start button. So once you start this, now the proxy server is up and running. Then in order to make JMeter uh, collect all the requests from your browser, you need to configure this proxy server setting in your browser as well. So what you need to do is, now if you look at this, 
this proxy server is running on this machine and it is running on the port 8080. So what I do is, I open my Firefox, I open my Firefox, go to Tools, Options, under the net, go to the Advanced tab, go to the Advanced tab, select the Network sub tab, click on the Settings button and then I select Manual Proxy Configuration. The proxy server name would be localhost and the port would be 8080. Okay. So let me just go back to this once again. So once you have added the proxy server and started it, then you need to configure this proxy server on your browser. So open a browser like Mozilla Firefox. Uh, we all believe in open source, so the browser is also an open source one. So go to Tools, Options, Advanced, Network sub -tab, and inside that go to the Settings button, select Manual Proxy Configuration, select the server as localhost and the port as 8080. Once this is done, say OK and OK. Now you are ready for recording. Hope this is clear to everyone. Okay, so the next step is now we need to go ahead and record the scripts. Now we need to go ahead and record the uh, scripts. So here what I do is, I just go to the uh, Mozilla Firefox, just go to the Mozilla Firefox, then point my browser to the pet store, right, and I go to the, enter the site, then I click on docs, then select a category, and then finally add it to the cart. And then I close the browser. So once this is done, you could see that the complete script has been recorded by uh, the JMeter. So JMeter has recorded all the requests once you are done with this. And Kaushik, so just, uh, just one second. Kaushik, if you can select one yeah. request. For example, go to the view category shtml. Just click on that request. View category. Yeah. view category yes that request yes if yeah. you see the view category what you are seeing here is the URL at the top then it notes down the server name or IP address and the port where it is connected and then whether it is a get method or the post method because uh, the HTTP has get method and post methods and the parameters that are being passed category ID is a parameter dogs is a, is a parameter the value that is being passed okay and then if there are multiple parameters you will see multiple lines over here so there are other information out here but they are not supplied by the user even if you go to other areas you could see working item ID is a parameter product ID is a parameter and the value that is being sent from the browser to the server these things are uh, recorded by the proxy and one the important thing is you start the proxy start recording then once it is finished you need to go and then stop the proxy so if you don't stop if you accidentally go to the browser and then uh, do something that will also get recorded that will become a problem so you will be recording unwanted stuff so it is always better you start rec start the proxy do recording in your browser then come back to proxy stop. Then you could see all these things, uh, the URLs. Manually you go through the URLs, see how it is looking, what is the parameter being passed, everything. Okay. Now, once this is finished, once this recording is done, uh, what you need, normally need to do is to create a simple run. Okay. You need to make sure 
whatever you recorded is working. To do that, you need to go to the test plan. Um, can you show that, uh, Kaushik? Yeah. So in order to verify it, we will go to the test plan, right click, add, and then we will say thread, thread group. We will add this. Okay. So we will add this under the test plan. Initially, it will be with one thread, one user. We are only trying to verify if our scripts are running correctly. So here, we are not uh, running a load test with n number of users. We are just trying to verify our scripts. So what we do is, we add a thread group with just one user. So we don't change them. And once that is done, whatever requests are under the HTTP proxy server, we copy them. We copy them and paste under the thread group. We copy them and paste under the thread group. Then only your script creation is complete. If you have your request under the workbench, they are not going to run. Only if you have the request under the thread group, you can actually execute them. There is a question. Once There's a question that has come. Yeah. Uh, why should it be this difficult to start proxy, manually run, then record, copy paste? If you look at the evolution of these tools, these tools have been developed over a period of years. During the early stages of this tool, people use one method, but quickly they have got a big user base. After some point of time, the UIs were not changed. I think the UIs are pretty similar to what we have been seeing for the last four or five years. And if you honestly ask me, okay, this is uh, slightly tougher than Loadrunner or any commercial tools, we are not here in this webinar trying to compare and contrast the tools. We are here to see only the features of JMeter. So please refrain from such comparative questions because uh, when it comes to price or features, or support, the decision makers have a different opinion than the executors. So it is up to the decision makers to take a call on which tool to use. Hope you understand uh, from our side also because we, we try to give the features of this tool, not to try compare and contrast with other tools. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so once the script has been created like this, now I need to verify if the script is running correctly. What I do is, I go to the same test plan, I go to the same test plan, right click, right click, add, go to the listeners, and then I say, comparison, assertion, visualizer. Comparison, assertion, visualizer. Once I open this, right, now, if I, if I say run now, it will tell me if the script, if the request have been successfully submitted to the server and if the server has responded with successful status codes. So if you want to know that, we would do that by adding a comparison assertion visualizer. Then we say run and then we say start. So you need to save that, which I have not done it. So I am saving it now. Let me save it as jpet1. Right. So now you could see that all these requests are coming with green color with a tick mark, which means that the requests have been successfully submitted to the server and the server has successfully responded with proper status codes. That's how you evaluate whether the script that you have created is working correctly or not. Okay. One more time, I'm just removing this. So once you are done with creation of a thread group and pasting a script there, I would say right click, add, listener, uh, then I would say comparison, assertion, visualizer, and I say add it. Now this is added now. What I would do is I would say run and then start. And once this is done, if our requests have been successfully submitted and if the server has responded properly, you would get all green color boxes. Otherwise, it would come in a red color box. Hope this is clear to you all.
Okay. Uh, so um, now we have created uh, a script, but the script that we have created is not readable. Okay. I will not be able to say which URL is performing what. Right. So in order to do that, in a generic uh, uh, load testing terminology, we call we have something called a transactions. So transactions are the intermediate steps that you perform. Now if you look at the scenario, the scenario is to add an item to the shopping cart. Uh, but what just is, quick, quick once again yeah. here, Kaushik. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Typically, uh, if you look on the left hand side, each one is a, is a page request. Okay. Within the page, there may be multiple GIF files or CSS elements or uh, HTML portion or a PHP portion. So if you can expand that on the left hand side, there's a key symbol, please expand under each of them. Okay. Uh, but the thing here is you cannot exactly compare okay, the, the thing with commercial tools and the way JMeter is done. I think most of the questions are that tool is like this, this tool is like this. The UIs are always different. But conceptually, if you look at load testing as a concept, whether it is load runner, whether it is JMeter, whether it is NeoLoad, whether it is Gomez, uh, Silk Performer, IBM Rational Performance Tester, all work on the same thing. There is a proxy. Through that it takes. Certain tools do not require the proxy configuration by you, but internally it does. And the certain tools provide a visual screenshot of every single step. Uh, but most importantly, it has to fire so many users. That's the concept. So conceptually, all tools are same. But every tool has its own uh, UI portion differing. Uh, as Kausik was mentioning uh, a, a few minutes ago, in, in a typical project environment, we don't record everything as request after request. We use something called a container or say uh, actions or transactions, depending upon the tool's terminology. So we, would, we try to put them under a folder. They are nothing but a folder structure. So you first create a folder structure, then after every request is done, you have to do a drag and drop. Now he will show how to do using a folder structure.